Greetings. My name is Dark Wit. Today I wanted to introduce you to a method that I use to help people go deep into their subconscious. I want to clarify that the techniques that I use to help people relax are more of a metaphor, an analogy that I use because I want to develop a common form of communication. I mean, you see, when it comes to hypnosis, it's not a magical process or this altered state. It's really more of a form of communication between hypnotist and subject. I don't want you to think like what we're doing is anything too complicated. Ultimately, it's a form of guided meditation. That's all it really is. So if you're nervous about this or worried about it, it's okay. Just try to listen along and if you're worried that it's not working, well, at least it's a pleasant voice to listen to while you relax. Take a moment to find yourself a place to relax. It can be a bed, a couch, a chair, even the inside of your car, provided that you're stopped and in a safe place. What's important is that you don't need to have any other distractions come up. But, as I've mentioned before, even the wildest distraction is something that you can slowly acknowledge and tune out. Let's begin with a deep breath. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale. Exhale. This steady breathing is a reminder to our body that it has no need to move or exert itself right now. It is moving into recovery, and we are taking a moment to center ourselves. Stillness isn't exclusively necessary. It's more of a headspace we're trying to get to. If we can't completely get there, that's perfectly fine. Now, I'm going to give you a representation of this process, merely a metaphor. I want you to follow along closely, as best you can. I want you to imagine that we're standing on the edge of a dock, a wooden dock, where a boat is tied up to the side. I'm on top of the deck. The boat is well tied off, very secure. It could be a sailboat or a motorboat or whatever shape that comes to mind. The idea is that it is a ship for the two of us. I've made all of the preparations for you to come onto this boat. All that's required is for you to take the first step and for you to trust me. I understand that we're in a video and that I don't know who you are, not really. But I understand and appreciate you taking the time to listen. One thing I do know about you is you want to be hypnotized. You want to relax, whether it's out of curiosity or otherwise. This boat is a representation of that process, and I extend my hand to you so that you can gently reach out, rest your hand in mine, and I slowly give you the balance you need to step up onto that boat, just like that. Very good. Like most who are going through this for the first time, it's a little unusual at first. Maybe the water shifts the weight underneath you a little bit. 
but your body in the surface world is going to stay on that dock. And you and I are going to go on a trip. I've chosen a boat because there is a protocol, a gradual procedure that is quite therapeutic, something that helps us zen out and slide into serenity, a ritual that we perform whenever we go out to sea. We check all the halyards, we check all the moorings, we check the ropes, we check the life rafts, in case something does go wrong. And then we warm up the engine, we tie off the ropes, undo all the things that keep us moored here, we bring them on, we spool them up into nice neat curls and coils, because we don't need them right now. We don't need those tethers to keep us here. I wrap my hands around the steering wheel, pull the lever to help us go on our way out to sea. The air is crisp, and the distant sound of seagulls breaks up the slight monotony of the rock of the boat and the gentle lap of the waves. The thing about the ocean is that it's never completely still. It's always moving, much like ourselves. Even though we're lying there in that bed or in that chair, the movement never completely stops. The blood continues to flow to our lungs to give us the air we need. Our chest rises and falls, and we appreciate the rhythm that comes with it. It is not silence and stillness that we seek. It is serenity and flow. Because the world around us is a living, breathing thing. And even at its most relaxed, the breath still comes. And with that, the land is behind us, and we look out to the endless blue, where light blue connects with dark blue of a bright sunny day. The boat rises and falls, but keep your eyes on the horizon, and you won't feel dizzy or disoriented. As you do, the feelings of the surface world of that place from before start to gradually dissolve, gradually give way. We're out at sea on this vessel, taking the time to quietly disconnect ourselves from everything before. We're not seeking stillness. We're seeking flow, steady, monotonous, predictable easy to follow. There you go. That's what you need. Gradually, the world behind us grows incrementally smaller, tinier and tinier. The mounds of land from before grow ever thinner until they're no longer there. But I know where we're going. I know what we're doing. Where we're going is a very special place. A special place where only you and I can visit. And I can only visit if you welcome me there. You can see it off in the distance. Imagine it like the smallest blip of tan on the horizon. The gentle outline of slightly darker blue amidst the atmosphere cutting away, filtering it, making it seem much larger than life. It's an island, an island that we've been going to this entire time, in the rhythm of rising and falling ever so gently. It allows us to get closer and closer. I'm going to count to ten, and when I do, that island's going to get a little bit bigger. 
By the time I get to ten, we'll be close enough to see the shore, to explore it if we so desire. And I want you to follow along as best as you can. One, take a deep breath. Two, gradually the island gets to grow a bit bigger. Three, the slight haze that obscures its silhouette starts to fade. Four, more detail coming into existence and we welcome it. Five, making our way closer and closer. Six, we can see the details of the trees, of the sand, of any structures that you imagine this place might have, as built up or as wild as you desire it to be. Seven, we can see the water underneath our ship begin to grow brighter, lighter, as the shallows begin to reassure us that it is a safe space. There's nothing underneath us. Eight, I slowly begin to turn the ship to a side so you can get a good look at it from the broad side of the ship. Nine, as we slowly come to a stop, slowly drop the anchor so as not to disrupt your flow, your rhythm. And ten, very good. You could see over the side of the ship there's a nice space for us to walk to. This is your island. This is your space. All separated from the outside world, surrounded by endless waves of blue. It's private. It's yours. And I thank you for allowing me to join you here. But this is not our final destination. No. Our final destination is deeper into the island. We've already set down the anchor. We're sliding off the ship, walking onto the sandy shores, imagining the, the sandy particulates of shells and rocks turned to dust wrapping around our fingers. Each time we take a step, the water from the ocean slowly parts way to the weight of our feet until we leave behind footsteps, easy marking points to guide us back to the ship when we're done. Now, I want you to imagine there's a clearing on this island, surrounded by comforting mossy grass, slightly chilled, so that when our feet gently rest atop it, we feel a sense of cool wash over our body on the hot day. There is a box in the center of this clearing. Now, this box is very special. This box represents your subconscious. It can look like anything, have any texture. It could be as large or as small as you like, and it can be in any color you wish. And this is ultimately where I guide people so that they can reach inside and define this space for themselves. Now, some people have boxes that have heavy locks on them. They can be new and polished or old and rusty. It doesn't matter. What matters is that regardless of how secure or open this box is, it's closed until you desire to open it up. For the time being, I merely only want to show you this box, to show you that it's here, to show you that at any given point, if you ever want to come here and open the box, you have the power to do so. You can peer inside yourself and imagine all the wonderful things you wish to accomplish and help make it a reality. The mind is a very powerful space. After all, it brought us here in the first place, didn't it? Now, I think we've spent a lot of time here. All I merely wanted to do was show you this box 
So I want you to turn around and take my hand. We're going to follow along those footsteps. Thankfully, the water is so calm here, very few of the footsteps have actually washed away. And you realize that we only went in a singular direction. And that's because coming here is very clear and very direct. It doesn't have to be this overly complicated thing. You're here because you want to be. And now, I'm going to get you on that ship, and I'm going to guide you back to where we were before, on the docks, in the beginning. I'm going to count to ten, and when I do, you're going to wake up relaxed, refreshed, and completely at ease. And that's all I can ask of you. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and awaken. I genuinely hope you enjoyed yourself today. If you wish to go back to the box sometime, feel free to leave a comment. Maybe we'll go deeper next time. For now, I merely wanted to show you the way that I communicate with other subjects. That I ensconce myself in analogy and metaphor to help you better understand where it is we're going. Something that's easy to follow, easy to understand. And most of all, easy to relax to. Thank you for listening. I hope to see you again.